Hi, this is Yohan and welcome to a new episode. Today we're gonna make this collage clutch bag. This time I'm gonna show you how to create this collage patchwork technique using fabric scraps, a little bit of batting, and lots of thread. The bag itself is quite functional as well. The finished measurements are about nine and a half inch by six and a half inch with a zipper pocket and a slip pocket in the interior and optional crossbody strap if you wish to make this as a crossbody bag. Download the pattern at yonsewingstudio.com. I will have the link somewhere in the description box down below. Please enjoy this tutorial and let's get started. Let's prepare the fabric for the collage patchwork. So you wanna gather some crumbs, bits and pieces from your scrap bin. You may choose one dominating color. In my case here, I choose pink. Or you can go bold, um, use multicolor in various patterns, or you can go for solid ones. So follow your creative instinct. For this project, I prefer to have my fabric scrap on the smaller size. So if I see one that is a little too large to my liking, I simply cut it into smaller pieces. I also trim off the salvage ends. For some reason, I'm not a big fan of them, but if you like them, you can keep them, of course. Next, we're gonna prepare the batting. So for this project, I'm using 100% cotton batting. So this batting will be the base for us to build the collage. We're gonna start working from the center of the batting. So grab a piece of fabric and then apply a little bit of fabric basting glue on the wrong side of the fabric. A little goes along the way here and then place this randomly on the center. Now take another fabric and then apply some basting glue. Then position this also on the center, um, overlapping a little bit from the previous fabric. Now let's grab another fabric and we're gonna continue building this collage. So don't think too much about the layout. The goal here is to fill in the surface of the batting. All right, I think I've already covered just enough surface for now. So I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and start sewing. So simple straight stitching is all you need to do here. I simply pivot and go back and forth. Now if you want to and you have a lot of time, you can get very creative here. You can do variation of stitching design or you can hold off on variation and do it rather later once the whole collage already coming together and filled the batting. So there's really no set of rules here. Um, just have fun and follow your creative instinct. All right, now I'm gonna continue building my collage. Keep adding more fabric and overlap them. And it's totally fine if there is excess fabric sticking out from the batting. We're gonna trim this off later anyway after we're done piecing. All right, I think it's good enough for now. So I'm going to my sewing machine and run a bunch of straight stitches. This time I stitch this much quicker than previously. So from corner to corner, different angle, different directions. So the more the merrier. Here I've already done my collage halfway and this is how it looks on the wrong side. You can see lots of stitching line I did. And here I've already covered my entire batting. Um, you can see lots of stitching, lots of overlapping fabrics, creating this really interesting texture. And, and I really, really like how, how it's turning out. I'm not going to stop here just yet. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my sewing machine and run more stitching from all different angles, different directions. The more stitching you do, the better because all the fabrics will be bound together and sort of just blend in. It will also give you a better and sturdier structure and preventing the raw edges of the fabric to be sticking out too much. All right, I am done stitching my collage fabric and I really, really like how it looks and the texture of this fabric. Now let's trim off the excess fabrics that are sticking out from the batting so we want the edges to be even. And then we're going to trim off this panel again so that the width will measure 10 and a half inch and the length will measure 18 inches. And that's it, the exterior panel is done. Now let's work on the interior. Cut a piece of rectangle the same size as the exterior panel. Fuse the wrong side with some fusible woven interfacing that you cut a slight smaller and center the position of course. Now let's work on the zipper pocket. So grab your zipper pocket panel, draw the zipper template one and a half inch down from the top edge, right on the center. Draw a seven inch by three eighths of an inch rectangle. And as usual, you wanna draw the little corner triangles and the line right on the center of the template, just like shown on the screen right now. 
Position the zipper pocket panel on the right side of the interior panel, about 4 inches down from the top edges. Pin them in place and then stitch right along the outline of the template. Once you've done that, you want to cut through the center line and the corner triangles as well. Of course, be careful as you get to the corner, do not cut through the stitches. Turn the pocket panel to the wrong side and then you want to press this to neaten up all the edges. Now let's prepare the zipper, so you will need an all-purpose zipper at least 8 inches long. It's you will apply some basting tape on the edges of the zipper tape and then position the zipper template on top of the zipper. Once everything is secured, let's stitch this all around. Use about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Trim off any excess zipper about quarter of an inch from the seams. Now let's bring the bottom of the pocket towards the top, aligning the edges and then stitch the sides and the top with three eighth of an inch seam allowance. Of course, when you sew, make sure to get the interior fabric out of the way. And that's it. The zipper pocket is done. Now let's work on the slip pocket. Fold the pocket panel in half widthwise so the short side edges should be touching each other and then stitch this with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance leaving about 2 to 3 inches of opening to turn this pocket inside out later. Now let's clip the top corners and then turn the pocket inside out. Poke the corners and then you want to fold the row edges towards the wrong side about 3 8 of an inch and then press this and then top stitch along the top edges at the same time closing the opening. Now you want to position the interior panel with the bottom edge facing up. Lay the pocket panel on the right side of the interior panel about one and a half inch down from the bottom edge. So the top edges of the pocket, the one with the top stitching, should be facing the bottom edges of the interior panel. And of course you want to center the position, pin them in place and then stitch the sides and the bottom of the pocket. This is how your slip pocket should look like now, so the opening should be facing towards the bottom of the interior. Now let's work on the D-ring tabs if you opt for the adjustable strap. So you want to cut two pieces of two inch squares, fold and press in a fourth to make a half an inch wide strip and then stitch along the side edges with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now let's attach the D-ring and then position the D-ring tab on the bottom edges of the interior panel about an inch away from the side and then repeat the same to the opposite side. Now sew this in place with quarter of an inch seam allowance. For the adjustable strap, you will need about 55 inches long strip 2 inches wide since we're gonna make a half an inch wide strap. Fold and press your strip in a fourth, but first you wanna fold and press the short ends about half an inch towards the wrong side. The same goes for the opposite end, and then stitch this all around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then go ahead and install all the hardware, the swivel hooks and the slider as well. If you need a tutorial on how to install the hardware, I will link a separate video for that, so check somewhere in the description box if you are watching from YouTube, and I will include that on the pattern as well. Now we're gonna install the magnetic snap closure. Now if you haven't already, you will need to decide which side will be the bottom and which side will be the top edges of your exterior panel. You may do a little bit of assessment by folding your exterior panel in a third, just like that, and see which side you like best. So the edges that will be the flap of your back, that will be the top edges of your exterior. Thus the opposite side will be the bottom. From the bottom edge of the exterior panel, you want to measure three and a quarter inch right on the center. Put a little mark there and then install the female magnetic snap. From the top edge of the interior panel, you want to measure one and a quarter inch right on the center and then put a little mark there and then install the male magnetic snap closure. Before you install the male magnetic snap, make sure to add a couple extra interfacing on the wrong side to stabilize this area. Now it's time to assemble our bag. So lay the interior and the exterior panel right sides together. So you want to make sure that the bottom part of the exterior, the one with the female magnetic snap, is touching the bottom part of the interior, which is the one with the slip pocket and the upper top of the exterior is touching the upper top of the interior which is the one with the male magnetic snap. Now let's clip this in place and then stitch all around leaving about 4 to 5 inches of opening at the bottom to turn this back inside out later. Once you've done sewing, you want to clip all the corners. Be careful not to cut through the stitches. 
and then trim off the seam allowances of the long sides and the top. Don't trim off the seam allowances of the bottom part because we need that extra fabric to fold the raw edges of the opening hole. So you want to trim as close as you can to the seams, of course carefully, because you don't want to accidentally cut through the stitches. Now turn the back inside out through the bottom opening hole. Use a point turner or chopstick or knitting needle to poke the corners, make them nice and neat. Alright, now go to your ironing board and give this a good pressing. Just be mindful with the zipper and the hardware when you do the pressing. And here I've already pressed my fabric. Now we're gonna take care of this bottom opening. So fold the raw edges towards the wrong side about 3 8 of an inch. And then clip. And then stitch this with an 8 of an inch seam allowance. Fold the during tab towards the right side, just like that. And then run a few stitches to hold this in place. Stitch back and forth a few times, about an 8 of an inch from the edge. If it is too bulky for your machine, you may hand stitch this instead. From the top edges of your bag, you want to measure down 4.5 inch and then put a little mark on both sides. So this should be right above the zipper pocket. Bring the bottom edges towards the 4.5 inch mark and then clip to secure this in place. And then if you want to, do a little bit of assessment. So bring the flap and then close the magnetic snap closure. If there is any necessary adjustment, you may do it now. Once you're happy with it, let's add more clips to secure everything. And then we're gonna stitch the sides and the top edges with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So from the outer side of your bag, and start from the bottom, of course. Back stitch a couple of times as you get started. So you may use either one eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch seam allowance, whichever one's more comfortable with your machine. Use your walking foot, it will make your life much easier. Now this is another important part. As you get to the end of the body of the bag or the end of the fold, before you get to the flap area, you want to back stitch a few times to reinforce this area. So please take a look at the arrow indication. So those are the parts that you need to reinforce with back stitching. And of course the bottom edges as well as you start and ending the sewing. Continue top stitching the flap area and as you get to the other side, as I mentioned earlier, you want to back stitch or reinforce the upper top of the body and the bottom as you end the stitching. Alrighty, so the back is done. Now let's attach the adjustable strap and voila! That's all for today guys. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, goodbye!